civic group, let's give God a good hand for us to support us. We cheer you up. Welcome. Thank you. And I believe all of us have had a good time. We have eaten. And we are all interested in becoming and supporting international full gospel business men, business family, family. And thank you very much for coming. Give yourself a good applause. Give yourself a good applause. One thing I know before I do the next thing is this, because we are not here to speak. I'm not here to speak, just to say one thing. Business is very important. Entrepreneurship is very important. And we want you to support this work, this dream, this vision. In your table, you can see there is a card. That card is about us knowing how to connect, how to reach you, and even to be able, one of these days, to involve you in leadership in one way or another. Why? Because business, as we all know, is about relationship and connection. If you want to succeed, you must have a friend. Because two are better than one. And two or one can do something alone. But when you are two, or 10, you do a lot, you'll be able even to get to 10,000 people. But when you're alone, when you calm down, when you are depressed, when you are anxious, you'll not, you'll not be able to know what to do. So, brothers and sisters, my fellow colleagues, take that card, write your name, write your address, write your contact, and believe me, we will not travel. We will not keep chasing you with information. No. We'll call you when there is a need because we know time is money. Time is important. And we want to utilize time like real business people. Like real entrepreneurs. And that's why we are requesting you. Please put it down. And if you are interested in becoming a member, supporting this dream work, it's good, we'll call you another day. It's not about today. So thank you very much. And uh, Mr. President, before I introduce the speaker, may I introduce a friend of mine whom we have worked together since we were young adults. We have worked together since we were young adults. We have helped each other in business connection in Kenya and in America, and we respect each other. I'm give, going to give him only 60 seconds, and his name is my friend, John Washia. Let's put our hands together for my friend, John Washia. Hey Amen. I greet you all this evening. My name is John Washira, and uh, I'm so excited um, to hear there is a new chapter here of Food Gospel uh, Business. Uh, in Africa, we call it Food Gospel Businessman Fellowship. And um, I used to enjoy it so much in Africa. And um, our goal then was to reach out and make a family of businessmen people back in the day. My prayer is you continue to connect, you continue to know each other. Right now, I am um, doing a home care business, me and my wife, and um, my wife is the, the big director. I am working alongside her. Amen. Her name is Joanna Chira, and uh, I thank God for this opportunity. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That is the way businessmen, business people do it in one in 60 seconds. <laughs> Let's give him a good hand. The next person to introduce 
Before I introduce the speaker and the, the family who are going to speak to us, it's my wife. I'm married and we say international full gospel businessmen fellowship is to help families become better and better. I'll show you my wife is good. Let's my wife stand up and, <laughs> and succeeding in business or entrepreneurship. When we came here in 1986, me and my wife and migrated from Kenya, we found a family which had just moved from Lowell to Connecticut. This family did not know me and I did not know them face to face. But from Kenya, I had met the father of Esther and the family of Esther, but I had not met Dr. Jeremiah. So when I came here, we visited him with my friend uh, Florence and Simon. They are here, they are, that's our testimony. They told us America is a good country, but the way to succeed in America is to stay out of trouble. <laughs> it's to say what? He taught us, we spent the night there, they taught us that there is everything which is there to put down and if you follow through the process, you will succeed and to be settled in America. They were so generous, they took us, Dr. Jeremiah took us all the way to Salem State University and made sure we enrolled there as international students. And since then, we have never stopped going to school, me and my wife. <laughs> because I saw somebody who was going to school, the wife was going to school, and he has become a doctor, so I said, it's a good way, it's a good journey. So he took us directly, like the way you take your son, and take him to school, you know, that's what he did. So, after that I watched him. I watched him when he moved there down. This family have been able to start something from the ground. They have a big real estate there. They have built and it is operating successfully. So when we say me and Sergio, we say let's look for somebody who can give a testimony which is real life lived and bring a convincing thing of where we can stay connected and succeed. Believe me, we have the right candidate for tonight as the speaker. Let's put our hands together for Dr. Jeremiah and Esther. Dr. Jeremiah, you and uh, Esther, you will Esther. Well, that's a powerful introduction. <laughs> and I'm so privileged tonight to have my wife Esther with me, and I'll have her greet you, and, and then we'll continue. Hello, everybody. <laughs> It's a blessing. Uh, I'm coming back here to Lowell. It's a real blessing for us. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited. It's like coming back home. Because uh, uh, Jeremiah and I, we went to UMass uh, um, many years ago. When I came, I was not married. When I came to America, I was not married. Uh, we've been married now for 29 years. Wow. By honor and glory to God. <laughs> I want to let you know that uh, there is joy in what you are doing. Uh, even being entrepreneurs in the world, I think is a great thing. And also to be to allow yourself to be a blessing to somebody else. Because what that you have is not you as alone. It's also for other people to benefit from. Amen. 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 Yeah, I'm so happy to see all of you. Um, I, I'm just so encouraged. And uh, this young man here is such a blessing to me. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's good. That's good. I like that. <laughs> he has told me 
many things and uh, we have done business together and uh, the International Gospel Fellowship where we, start, we preach. I, I can let you know that it really started, it's very root well from Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship because how we ended up in Connecticut was through Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship because we were ministering in conferences all over this region and it's then that we met somebody that introduced us to Connecticut. So it's a blessing that you're here and God bless you. Well, it's a wonderful thing to be here tonight and I know time is of essence I'll do my best to stay within my time. Got too many papers here. Full Gospel Businessman Fellowship. And uh, so she just reminded me how we ended up in Connecticut. Uh, it was through Southern New England uh, Full Gospel Businessman Fellowship. I think it was the last one Dimo Shakarian ever attended. He was in a wheelchair. And uh, we met a brother there who connected us with someone else and we began to travel down there to minister and to see people there. And we did not know that that's the way uh, God would lead us and finally wound up in Connecticut where we did not know anybody. Uh, but I can tell you this as I begin. Uh, one of the keys for success is to be bold mm -hmm. and not to be afraid mm -hmm. and never to underestimate yourself. Because the story has not been told of what you are capable of doing mm -hmm. and you don't quit dreaming no matter how old you are. Mm -hmm. I remember a few years ago we were in Burlington uh, for a marriage conference and uh, so the man was there who was leading the session and he said anybody married, uh, he, actually he said anybody, he took everybody to, sit, to stand, anybody married five years sit down. So people sat down, anybody married ten years sit down. People started sitting down. He kept on going until he got to 50. There were still people standing. <laughs> then he said, okay, 60. Everybody sat but one couple. And he said, what are you doing here? <laughs> and he had a gift for them. And they said, we want to learn. Mm -hmm. After being in this business for 60 years, we still find we still need to learn. So, uh, you always have to go to school, <laughs> keep going, it's, it's, it's a wonderful investment in your life. Amen. So I am so privileged to be here tonight, it's a long time since we were in law, we lived here for about six or seven years before we moved to Connecticut, and uh, the few minutes that I have are not sufficient to share my testimony, but I will try to uh, to summarize it as, as much as I can and then uh, we will be out of here. Let me begin by saying that I am grateful to God because what I am today and where I am today in life, I don't think I would be if it were not for Him. I graduated high school in 1979 so uh, back in Kenya, I was a young man, you know, and uh, I, I loved life. And uh, I, I, I see my pictures when I was a young man, you know, I, I wanted, I was interested in girls, uh, like other boys. I was interested with in everything the other boys were doing in my village. And uh, I look at my pictures when I was in high school, I cannot believe it's me. But you know, no matter where you are, God can point at that picture and say, I knew you, even before you were formed in your mother's womb. I knew you, because I can't even recognize myself. 
had a t-shirt. One t-shirt I was wearing was saying, my body is mine. <laughs> like there was a competition for my body. <laughs> message I was trying to pass to my generation. <laughs> but, but I remember the last year of high school, uh, I actually, uh, my mother, my mother actually paid for me to go to a youth conference uh, done by the Anglican church and I didn't want to go. But uh, after thinking, I said, well, I think it's good, a good idea for me to go one week without working on the farm. Because we went, we had coffee, we had tea, we had cows, and every minute my dad came around, you are not supposed to be sitting around. <laughs> what, what, and you, the, the thing is, you saw him, you ran, because he will find work for you. So I say, uh, for a week away, whatever you call it, youth conference, I'm going. But I did not know that I would go there and there was something in store for me. You, you never know what God has for you in the next stage, the next place, but, but there is always something God is working. And so I found myself in this youth conference. Uh, the last day of the, of the conference, this young man called Philip kept saying to me, you, you've been going to church and you, you've, you've not really given your life to God. And I said, um, I, didn't, I knew what he meant. And I didn't want to get involved with that. I came to escape farm work. I did not come to be confronted with this thing you're calling whatever, the truth. But, you know, he insisted so much that I, he prayed for me. And I, don't, I prayed with my mouth. My heart was not in it. But, you know, your words do matter even when heaven hears them. And as a young man, my life began to turn around when I left that conference. And I found myself going back, you know, to our local church, and my life actually began to, to gain some direction. You know, um, I was so radically changed that I say to myself, I cannot, I, I had a girlfriend. So I said, I cannot continue with this girlfriend because my path has changed. So I, I wrote her a letter, those were the days before the internet. Uh, before you could text, before you, I wrote a post office snail mail. It took, and it had to take like two weeks to get to her. And I, and I, and I, and I explained my newfound faith and direction in life that two cannot walk together unless they agree. So I said, please, we cannot continue because I'm on a new direction. You are not. And the only thing I need from you, please, is my picture that I gave you. We had exchanged pictures. Yo, even those days, people are exchanging pictures. It's normal to fall in love. Don't look at me like you haven't done that. <laughs> so anyway, to cut the long story short about that one, that came, you know, the, 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 the girl came, she was broken. And I, I wasn't broken uh, because my life was changed. And honestly, my life began to change at that point. And I don't even remember exactly what was going on. I was a sickly boy when I was growing up. I had trouble with my knees. And um, I remember when I went to A-Levels High School, I had my problems with my body. My heart was beating too fast. And I was, I was getting nervous also. And I, and I was, I, I, my life was, was having real problems. In fact, one night, my parents had to take me to the hospital uh, and I didn't think I would make it because my heart was beating so fast. And when I went to the doctors, actually they gave me medication that was the wrong dose. So instead of regulating my heart, it, it went down, actually slowed the heart rate to uh, less than 40. So when I saw Dr. Nagpa, he was an Indian doctor, he, I was shocked when he checked my heartbeat and all that, and uh, the pharmacist had made a mistake. But um, God was watching over me. And I remember one day, one day, that was in the year 1982, I was going to a doctor's appointment. We lived in a village, so you had to walk before you can find the public means. I decided, I had just become a believer, and I decided to walk in a bush and pray. And as I was praying, I said to God, God, if you hear my prayer, I want to serve you. 
and help me because this heart is a problem. My knees, I used to get injections on one of my knees and I wasn't doing well. And I remember when I sat with the, with the doctor that day when I went to see him in the city, I asked him, will this affect me in my old age? Because I was thinking about old age. And he smiled and he said, I don't know. You know, he didn't want to scare me. I was a young man. But I knew something happened in that bush when I prayed. Because in a week, the doctor said to me, I'm going to send you to this other place in Nairobi where they will take a picture of your heart and they, I, they will also do this test and then you bring me the tests. Uh, the doctor was in another office. So to cut the long story short, I did that. I brought my reports. But to his amazement, my heart didn't even have a problem and my heart rate had normalized. And my knee trouble went. My migraines were gone. I used to have migraines. And I only asked the Lord to heal my heart, but I think he came with a broom. And he just swept clean so many of the ailments that I had. And I am so glad that he did that because he started me off on a trajectory that I knew that it's, it's going to end somewhere good. Now, I, I went to college. It was a miracle that actually I got admitted to that college. And I know that God took me over there for a reason. It was awesome, the things that happened when we were there. And I remember one of the things that I realized is that if you have faith, God can do anything for you if you let him. And as a young man, I was, I remember those days actually, uh, Deepu Shakarian had started coming to Kenya and some other people that were, were in the field and uh, they were preaching and we got involved in their meetings and all that. But I, I wanted to have my own faith and know that God can take me and show me who he is and teach me for myself because I didn't want to ride on someone else's faith. And I remember, uh, I, I will share maybe two testimonies about what occurred to me. Um, when I was in college, I used to travel a lot to go and minister. And one day, I wanted to go to the neighboring country, Tanzania. And I didn't have the money. But I realized, you know, with faith, money can come. And actually, I say to myself, when I'm at it, I always had a desire to go to Zanzibar. Zanzibar is an island off the, the mainland of Tanzania. And now, I'm a student, I don't have money in my pocket. But the, the, we, we planned everything. I was, actually, this trip, I was, we were gonna go with somebody else, but I was gonna go by myself this time. And that night, before Actually, the night that I prayed, before actually the next couple of days I was supposed to go, I'm planning all these things without money. I had a dream, like a, at night, and I saw this brother who is, um, who was actually a teacher in college. Thank God for those who train to be teachers. You can impact people in so many ways. God needs people everywhere. And this man actually was, was a teacher there, and in the dream I saw him approach me. And he gave me an envelope in the dream that had some cash in it. So when I woke up, I was disappointed that it was a dream. But in the morning after breakfast, I was walking to class and I see the same man, the teacher, walking towards me and I'm heading to my classes. And um, I didn't even remember the dream, but he stopped me. He said, Jeremiah, he said, yes, I have an envelope for you. And he gave it to me. Wow. All of a sudden, I remember the dream. You know, I didn't go to class, I went to the bathroom. <laughs> I wanted to see what was there, so I opened the envelope, and the exact amount of money that I needed for my ticket was there. Wow. Tell you, God is good. So I, I knew that this is my direction. I wouldn't tell my parents because the, my mother would panic, and uh, I, I would never tell them when I left the country. I'll tell them after the fact. And so this 
time I went over into Tanzania, and this is the second, the first time I went, we were arrested at the border, that's another story. But uh, this time I was able to get over there, and, and things happened, and then I said, God, I want to go to Zanzibar. We were, I was actually having meetings at the University of Dar es Salaam, and so I was going to go to Zanzibar and then come back to Dar es Salaam, and I had never been to Zanzibar before. I did not know a soul, but in my heart I felt I need to go there. So I went to dinner, and it's a meeting, a dinner, a brother from Tanzania was introduced to, he was actually in the business of supplying medicine, but he was a Christian. So we are having this meeting in the evening in his house, and I say, I didn't want to go to, Dari, uh, to Zanzibar, but I don't know anybody. So we, we were talking, and then he says, you know what? When do you want to leave? I said, I can leave tomorrow. He said, I'll buy you the ticket. Now, I don't know anybody. So he buys me the ticket back and forth, and I have probably two or three dollars in my pocket. So I get on this plane, never been on that, this talk of friendship, the place that, you know, my friend tried to get onto one and it, it started to take off and it, it aborted the, <laughs> to get into the air. And the pilot said, whoops. <laughs> we'll try again. So he cycles around the second time, whoops. But at that time it took off. <laughs> So I end up in Dar es Salaam, and actually, I, no, no, in Zanzibar, in the afternoon, I don't know anybody in this country. But you know the way you learn faith and to trust that God can do something for you. You ask God to teach you, He will teach you. So I end up here in Zanzibar, and uh, it's predominantly Islamic, but there were missionaries who had gone there many years ago and built churches. So I stopped a cab, and, I, and the money I had was enough to get on a cab. And I, he asked me, where are you going? I said, drop me anywhere where there is a church. Anywhere. So he said, well, I'll drop you to the nearest church. So he drops me at the nearest church, and I say, thank you. And I get off with my little bag, and I, and I had never been to this church. I walk into that place, and uh, uh, I saw a house. I think it was the minister's house, so I say, I'm going to introduce myself. And then I find uh, a bunch of people and they were having lunch. They thought I belonged to the meeting. They offered me food. I was hungry, so I, I just joined them and pretended to be a part of the team. So I had my lunch. And then the brother next to me, there was a man who I did not even know that he is a brother. I said, oh, uh, what's your name? And we exchanged names. And he said to me, uh, I don't belong to this church, but I belong here. And I've been, I've been praying for somebody to come here, and I think you're the one. I said, oh, okay. And, and, and he says to me, oh, do you mind spending the night at my place? I said, Hallelujah. I don't even know anybody. I didn't know where to sleep, but I'm offered a place to sleep right there. Then, actually, the rest is history, because actually there were meetings there to share, and there was a lot of work there that was accomplished. So I went back to Dar es Salaam, having actually, that's another testimony I can't give now because of time, because the flights were full, and they told me I can't leave for a week. But the day I was supposed to leave, I did leave, because, because there was this one seat available. Uh, it was supposed to be somebody else's uh, big wig, but uh, I was more important than that person. The kingdom of God needed somebody to travel more than that big wig uh, from, the, from the government. And uh, so it's, it's a long story. I enjoyed life and, I, and, uh, and, and serving God and, and even coming to America was just another story. I'm going to share a couple of things how we ended up here. Uh, actually, I wasn't married. That's another story I can give tonight. I, uh, I, I was in New Jersey, I had just arrived, and I, I, I was trying to get in touch with people, and I got her number, and I didn't know where she was. I said, uh, is that Esther? I, I knew her in Kenya. He said, yeah, and I used to joke a lot. I said, I came all the way to marry you. That's what I told her. And, we, and I was joking, she laughed, I laughed. But you don't laugh too much. <laughs> 
So if you're here and you're looking for a mate, there is one in the wings. Okay, okay, there's provision. God is good. But my story of coming here was is a different story because I remember we were in a meeting, we were in a conference in Nairobi, and uh, this lady actually didn't know me and came and said to me, it was a conference in uh, KICC, and she said to me, you are going to go to America. And I said, what do you mean? I said, okay. And to me, at that time, America was like another planet. I, didn't, I was actually not interested. I didn't have the money. And I would have wanted to come, but you know, I, the desire wasn't there because I didn't have the money or the connections. But she said to me, that's what God shows me. And, uh, and so, and she went her way and I went my way. I think it was seven years later that I found myself in Maine. I started my journey in Maine. Uh, uh, I was in a small Bible school, Faith School of Theology. And I'm telling you, I was baptism not by fire, but by ice. <laughs> I came in December, it was very cold. And I had, I was, I had my sweater, and I had my, I, and uh, it was, it was terrible. And uh, I fell so many times because I didn't know what ice is. And uh, I was, uh, it, it was, it was very, very, in fact, I thought I missed God. In fact, I, and I'm being punished for, for, for my disobedience because I never experienced such cold weather. Uh, but I was there for, for a while, and, uh, and then eventually, you know, I moved uh, from uh, Maine, and I moved to Massachusetts, and that's, you know, how we, we met with Esther, and I remember as we were looking for a place of worship and all that, we connected uh, with uh, um, Pastor Najam and uh, CCF, and uh, it, it, was, it was refreshing to find a place and I remember, I'll share one testimony of what happened. All these journeys of me, I, I had actually traveled many countries for the kingdom, for without money. I had been used to having faith, but coming to America, in fact, when I, I was in Lowell, Mass, and I remember in the 90s walking on the streets of Lowell saying, God, if this is what America is, I need to go back. <laughs> because I used to have fun, I used to enjoy, I always, even, even though I didn't have money, somehow I had coins. And I remember we were so poor, we didn't have money. Uh, one, we, 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 I went to fill my car with gas, and uh, we had put together pennies. They were in a, in a, in a bag, that they were a hip. I had counted them, and they were like, like $10 worth of pennies. And in the gas station I went to, you pumped gas first, and then you paid. So I pumped it now for ten dollars, and I took the money in a bag. The man looked at me, looked at the money, and he said, "Go." I didn't even count the money. <laughs> and I remember it was I, I, I had a Toyota Corolla that was 19, a 1980 Toyota Corolla that was rusted. Every time I drove it, it was dropping a piece everywhere. But the engine was good. That car actually kept us for a very long time. And, and I was a student at Salem State, uh, and, as, and I remember, when I, when I was at Salem, I needed, um, I needed money for tuition. I was an international student. I never wanted to mess up my status. And uh, I was, it was so difficult. And I couldn't tell people that I need money. We prayed. At that time, I remember my wife, we would sleep. It, it, we, we were, our address at that time was 61 East Meadow in Law, and, uh, and apartment number five. It was heated by electricity. Uh, and so we were saving money, and she would put water bottles to, to warm herself in the bed. And, uh, and, uh, and I remember at this time we did not know, I, I was afraid we are, I'm going to lose my status. And we're, I couldn't tell Pastor John or Pastor Rufu what was going on. And um, one day I had a knock on my door and it was Pastor John from CCF. And uh, he, he was, actually he was so concerned, he said uh, he wanted to help us get a couch because we needed a couch. 
but he said to me, there's a woman in our church who was going to be a missionary in China, but she is not going, but we felt we need to give you this money to help you, to support you. When the check came, it was exactly what was needed for my tuition. They did not know that I needed tuition money. I didn't tell them, but it was exactly what I needed. And that was really uh, uh, an encouragement to me. I cashed the check, took it to Salem, and my I-20 was back to normal. And it, it was just a miracle that God made a way for us there. And then when I, when I finished... Uh, uh, Salem, I, 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 I wanted to continue going to school because I was interested in, in a doctoral program at the UMass place. And I remember when I applied to the program, you know, the doctoral program is, is a committee those days. I don't know what they do today. Your, your, your application is reviewed by a committee and then they vote to decide whether they admit you to the program or not. So, um, they, when they took my application at done the exams, they, um, I think one was not in favor, one was in doubt, and one was in favor. So, uh, I didn't even know this until later on. So one of the guys who actually became the chair of my dissertation, actually a member of the dissertation committee, actually called me later when I got my letter of admission. And he said, Two of, of us were not sure, I was sure. So don't, don't ashamed me. You, I say to them, I don't know what you're seeing, I see this man being victorious. Amen. You know, um, God will always put someone in a meeting where you're absent. Yes. When they're talking about you, someone will be inspired to be there even though you are not there. So you are always well represented. Always. So, and, uh, and so I got into the program and one of the things that they did, they admitted me to the program and they also gave me uh, a teaching assistant so that I never paid tuition. Actually, they were paying me like uh, $800, $900 a month on top of paying my tuition. So it was just a blessing. And I was able to finish that program successfully. I remember the day I defended my dissertation. And, and I'm saying this to say, to encourage you if, you, if you want to do something, you know, never doubt yourself. Many people will see your potential, uh, and others may not, but there, there will be someone that God will use. Like that woman who talked to me, or that person who was in that committee, or there'll be someone in the church where you cannot say something because there's a need, God will speak on your behalf. Yeah. He is always a friend. Even in business, deals will come to you. Yes, you have to work hard. You have to do what you have to do. But when you put in your bid, know that you serve a great God yeah. who goes ahead of you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? And I, I remember when I came to defend my dissertation, it, it, the, those days there was a problem. Actually, in, the, in, in most graduate schools, what happened is when, when you went to defend your thesis, if, if your committee members, your, your professors, have problems with other professors, they will come in order to poke holes with your student study so that they can revenge. Wow. Wow. So my prayer was, on the day I defended, let no one show up. <laughs> and so I was given a date to come and defend my thesis. I was in Connecticut already, and they actually predicted a huge storm. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, they, they started closing schools. I was on mass flight. I called my chair to find out whether they're still going to do my dissertation because I wasn't even sure I'm going to make it to law because it might start snowing any time. And he told me, we are not changing it. We might have snow in the afternoon, but we decided we're going to be here. The campus is closed, but we will be here. So all the other professors were closed out. <laughs> so when I went to defend my thesis, it was only my committee. And you know how they do these things. You go, you present, and then they ask, they ask you questions and all that. 
Then they tell you to go outside to, so that they can vote on whether they accept your work. And when I got there, I remember Dr. Gower saying, welcome Dr. Jeremiah Karanja. And I said, hallelujah. I'm saying this not to brag, but to say that when you have faith and you're, you, you're, you're, you're trusting in the Lord, God will always make a way for you. Amen. And um, now, just one testimony about our moving to Connecticut. Now, we were here, we, we just felt like we needed to move. Uh, and you know, it's not always clear how things are going to pan out. But we, we felt like there was a destiny for us in Connecticut. God wanted us to be involved uh, with, with some work there. And um, there was a ministry there that I knew. And actually, they invited us to go so that I can assist the pastor there and Esther would be with us and um, and they promised to help us pay our apartment and all that until we are settled. All the three kids were in diapers. And I never believed I would ever come out of diapers. I was so diapered with three kids all the time. Diapers were my friend. I, was, I would call her before I come home, do you need diapers? Because my head was bringing diapers. And, and we ended up in, in Connecticut. We ended up in this place in Connecticut, in Windsor. We did not know anybody. And it was, it turned to be a nightmare in the first time because when we got there, because the person who was hosting us changed his mind and did not tell us. They were dishonest, never supported us or paid anything. So I actually took my credit card I maxed it out, paying bills, anything I could find. But tomorrow my message over there in the church will be about that woman who borrowed vessels. Anyway, so I, I, we, we ended up actually in, in that place where it's disappointment. You have a choice to make when you face a disappointment. Mm -hmm. you, you have a choice to go down with a disappointment or believe that, that through the disappointment, mm -hmm. something will come out. Yes. And you're gonna brave out the wall and stay strong. Yeah. And so when, when, when we, when I say to Esther, you know, God hasn't disappointed us, man has. Right. But we're here because we were, we were obedient and we wanted to do something. So uh, I actually, she actually, I actually found a job, and uh, that's another story. I don't know how much time I have, and uh, and I was working in this group home there, and at that time I was doing my my whatever the I was writing my dissertation, and this kid who was a high school, he never finished high school. He said, "What are you doing?" He said, "I'm writing my thesis." He said, "You're not supposed to be working here." He got so mad. And I said, you're not supposed to be working here. With that kind of schooling, you're not supposed to be here. Here, this is the number. Call this man tomorrow. He's ordering me. So I actually took the number, called the man. The man said, I don't have a job, but I'll give you a number. See, one thing leads to another. The guy, I call him, and I'm telling you, I don't know anybody, but the man says, can you come and see me in three days? Favor. And when I met with him, I had my tie, I made sure I carried my folders to, to, to look a professional. Because I was a professional. And when I got there, he, he, he said to me, uh, where are you from? And I said, from Kenya. And we, it's a long story. And the man started saying, oh, when I was in school, I studied Kenyan history. Jomo Kenyatta, Jomo Kenyatta. Are you a Kikuyu? I said, how did you know? <laughs> so anyway, to cut the long story short, I got a job for the first time. When I left law, my, I, was, I was making $17,000 a year. That was a lot of money then. I could, he's looking at me saying. <laughs> but when I got there, that job was, I was offered was almost $40,000 a year to start with. And soon after, Esther got a job with the state of Connecticut, and our finances just bounced back. And God actually opened the door for us. We, we served that ministry. We felt like Jacob serving Laban. 
<laughs> we, we served there for four years. And then after four years, we said, we have to leave. And God released us to cut the long story short. Even then, we started, we started a ministry, an organization in our own house, in our basement. And then after that, we moved out of that. We went to a hotel where we were having meetings. And it kept growing. Then we leased a place where we went. And I, I'm telling you, all this time, things are moving. And when we moved from the hotel to the place we leased, I had to resign my job because I couldn't do ministry and also uh, continue with the work that I was doing with the school system where I was. So um, the, the church is growing, the ministry is growing. You know, don't let the word church um, make you nervous because, you know, what I have learned over the years of, of ministry is church is a business and is a ministry. And, and it, it's all these other things that apply to uh, principles about doing business the right way applies to the church. Anyway, here we are, and I want to share this testimony to the glory of God to show you never despise small beginnings because even great things always have started from small places. We leased that building, it was very expensive. We were paying three thousand, almost three thousand dollars a month before you pay the utilities. But from the day we got there to the time we left, we we never missed one payment. We never had a problem with paying any bill. To this day, to this day, we have never been late for any bill for almost eighteen years now. But what happened is when we went and leased this place, I remember the day I spoke to the church, we had about 40 people in the church, and I said, this is our first lease and the last lease. When we leave this place, we are going to our own building. Amen. I had no idea what our building costs, <laughs> but you know, faith doesn't always tell you the price. <laughs> but faith cannot be explained, and I remember I, I took my buddy who was in the church, a brother, and we started looking for land by faith. And I told the church, my 40 people, and I said, let's start a building fund. And we had $30,000 in the account, and I thought, now is the time to build. I have 30 grand. And I called a friend of mine who was a pastor, you know, and he said, 30,000? That's nothing in Connecticut. Oh. <laughs> I said, well, there goes my encouragement. I said, I'm not calling any other pastor. <laughs> I'm going to pray, and I'm going to believe that the God who sent us here is well able. So my friend and I are going there to Buckle Farms. So we'll go there and knock on doors, and, uh, and, uh, and, and they tell us, no, the land is not for sale. Then we'll knock on another door, and then we were about to sign a, uh, a contract with someone, and that fell through and it's, it's really, you have to know that when you fail, you learn and you rise back up. When one door is shut on your face, you don't stop. You keep moving. You may have a nosebleed, but keep going because the right door is going to open for you because God will never fail you. God will never fail you. And God doesn't care whether you're an American, an African, or a Lebanese. He is not a respecter of persons. No matter where you come from, we share the same blood. If you've been redeemed, there's, 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 there's a kingdom cause in your life. And so we are, we're struggling and we're looking for land. Oh, oh. I hope I don't this. I'm not going to hold on anything anymore. Okay. Uh, so, uh, one day, this brother, the friend of mine, we're looking for land. We have like now $40,000. He looked at me and he said, hey, why don't we go and check my land? Maybe you can build a church there. I said, what? Mm -hmm. We've been running around and you bet some land. I said, well, and he said, he said to me, well, I don't even know whether it can amount to anything, but, you know, I, I didn't even know. I knew where his house was, but I didn't know where they had that. So, so we went there and cut the long story short. We, this, this man, you know, uh, God works things in advance for you. Mm -hmm. He bought this piece of land when he was a young man, somehow. 
and he on his deed he has 11.9 acres that is the amount of land he has in his deed so he said I am going to give the church five acres okay so we decided to go and look for um, somebody who can actually, a wetland person who come in and, and actually take a, a look at the land and survey the land and see what can be built, what cannot be built. Uh, and so we, he, we went and went after surveying the land, he said, you have a problem here. You don't have 11 acres, you have 18 acres. So whoever sold him that land, God had ordained it. <laughs> so the wife says to him, he's, he's given us five acres. He still has more than 11 acres. So it's like he gave nothing yet. So that's how God works. He didn't lose anything. Actually, he gained because he got a new deal with more land. And the church got its land. So right there we had four and a half acres donated land, free and clear, given to us to build the church. Isn't God good? All the way, all the way. And you know, it was about half a mile away from the church where God had sent us first. The person who actually did not do right by us, wow. a mile away. And by the time we came to build, that particular church was no more. God is faithful. Yeah. And as we began to build this thing, we realized God is in it. And I'm here to encourage you because I know my time is up. I'm here to encourage you that no matter where you are, no matter what you are doing, yeah. you're going to succeed. Yeah. Yeah. I want to encourage you. There's one man who encourages me. There's one ingredient for success in the scriptures. There's one man called Abimelech in the book of Genesis. And Abraham is not telling the truth. Sarah is not my wife and know the story. And Abimelech takes Sarah. And you know the story that God appeared to Abimelech at night and said, you're a dead man. But Abimelech, Abimelech says to God, I did this out of the integrity of my heart. I was, this man said, it's my sister. And God repeats the same words to Abimelech and says, yes, because of the integrity of your heart, I kept you from touching this woman. When you're integrous, you may make a mistake. A righteous man can fall seven times, but each time they rise up. Your trajectory is rising up, not falling down. And I see many of you, you might be struggling, wondering how and, what, and how is it going to happen. It will happen because... I, I, God is faithful and it all starts my story started in 1979 18th of December when my heart received Christ as my Lord and Savior I would be a dead boy I, had, I was so diseased I was so weak in my village even I had a reputation as the weak boy and I know most of the weak boys that, most of the strong boys in my village there go back and most of them are dead I'm still alive. God has kept me. I'm telling you, God has a plan for you that is unique, that is wonderful. If you feel like you're failing, it's not in the DNA of the Holy Spirit to fail. You are going to succeed. Jesus will make you a winner and victorious, whether it's healing you, whether it's giving you money, whether it's providing. I don't know. I could not raise 200000 That land was appraised for more than $200,000. I didn't have that money, but God provided at the right time. And I can share testimonies upon testimonies of other things that God has done. And he will continue to do for you the same thing that he has done for us. 
and it's so wonderful. Jesus is the answer. He, is, he will give you the victory and he will turn your life. The scripture says he has turned my mourning into dancing Amen. and lifted my soul. And he will turn it tonight for you because he is faithful and he is here to touch you. And I, I believe this seed in this full gospel businessman fellowship, God is going to resurrect this seed. This will multiply, President. It's because it is the seed that is incorruptible that cannot die. It will keep multiplying. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 God is faithful. So I'm going to invite Pastor Jan to finish the meeting with a, with a word of prayer. God is in this place. We read about a man named Martin Luther, a priest, going up to the, on the stairways of a cathedral in Europe on his knees. So somehow he could please God, so he could be able to get favor from God. But then he heard a voice, and a voice from heaven came down and says, Martin, Martin, the righteous shall live by faith. What we heard tonight is a 21st century story about a righteous that has been walking by faith. For the Bible says, what does a man profit if he gains the whole world, but he loses his soul? Mm -hmm. You could be gaining a lot, but you're not profiting anything. There's a difference between gain and as a businessman, I've experienced a lot of gain, but no profit. But tonight, no matter where you are at in this journey of faith, you can change your gaining to profit. If you lift your eyes to the hills and trust in Him who turns all things for good to those that love Him, that I call according to His purpose and need. So I want to invite us right now to take a moment because you see, we're not embarrassed about prayer because we have seen the prayer works in our lives. And, and we're not fools, we are all of us successful businessmen and women, but we know that this did not come because we are smart. It came because somebody loves us, gave us favor, and he is God who created us. And this God that created us loved the whole world. Brazilians, African, Lebanese, the whole world. That he gave his only begotten son. Yes. That whosoever believes in him shall never perish. Yes. But have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. No matter how successful we are on this earth. We live 60, 70 or 80. Mm -hmm. And maybe 90. But 90 is nothing. Because when I was 20 I used to think 60 is wow that's far away. But all of a sudden I'm 65. Where did the time go? It goes like that because the Bible says man Life is like a grass, appears for a while, and it's gone. Would you bow your head with me for a moment together? And just think for a moment. Just pause. What we're gonna do is, we're all gonna pray together. We're all gonna dedicate our life to the God who created us, to the God who has a purpose for us. And his purpose is not a selfish, is a purpose that will, he will bless us to make us a blessing for others. There's a great and wonderful truth that is way above facts because facts are not as powerful as truth. Truth is way more powerful than facts. And the truth is simply this. Jesus Christ came to this world to his own, but his own did not accept him, did not receive him. But to all those that accepted him and all those that received him, God gave authority 
to become a children of God. And that's what makes us righteous. We cannot make ourselves righteous. And that's what we heard from our brother. His testimony kept saying, the steps of the righteous are ordained by God. And there's only one way to be righteous is to receive Jesus in your heart. So I'm going to pray a prayer and I'm going to ask all of us to repeat after me. Father God, Father God thank, you thank you for your love. For your love. Thank, you thank you for your grace. For your grace. Thank you, Father. For your, mercy. for your mercy. Thank you, Father, Thank you, Father. For, Jesus for Jesus Christ. I open my heart, I open my heart. And, I and I receive Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. In, my heart. in my heart as my own, as my own. Lord, Lord. Savior. Savior, Redeemer, Redeemer. And, friend. and friend. I dedicate my life, I dedicate my life. for the glory of God. Amen. 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 God bless you. Just for, just I wanna just for a moment ask if if it's possible. I don't know if anyone here tonight has prayed this prayer for the first time. And if you have, would you just kind of like wave to me? If this is your first time that you prayed such a prayer. You know, I don't know if there is any, but it's okay. If we would be nice to see if there is any. But if, if this is your first time that you prayed this prayer. Could you just wave? No? Okay? Well, I want to thank you all for being here. I want to bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Association of businessmen of the gospel. That's what we do. Yes, we are here to do business, but also we are here to do business with God. Yes. Okay? Amen. Because he's the one above all. And we are so thankful for life. We are so thankful for all that God has given to us. And I'm thankful tonight for you all who came here tonight. And um, please keep us in your prayers. And right now, like I promise, some treats for you. We have some sweetness that you can enjoy before you go home. Thank you so much. I want to clap to you all. Thank you. Please don't forget to fill it up the card, information card. If you desire to work with us as a director, please, we are open to work with you too. Thank you so much.